Hello, I'm Tess Gallagher, and I'm uh, uh, speaking to you from Port Angeles, Washington, which is my home in America. I have an Irish home as well, and that is my cottage, Abbey Cottage, in uh, County Sligo. And I've been going to Ireland for over 50 years now. I've had my cottage uh, going on 14 years. A very lovely place out in the country. But here I face Canada and I look across 28 miles of beautiful water, the Strait of Juan de Fuca, where I have been was fishing since I was five years old with my father, with Raymond Carver, my late husband, and uh, my brothers. Out the other window, we can look and see the Olympic mountain range. Everyone asks me, am I alone during uh, this time when we fight the virus? And I say, no, I'm very, very lucky. I have hummingbirds, I have eagles, I have wild deer, and lots of flowers all around me. I'm going to read you a poem that was written after my book, Is, Is Not, was published. And I read it to finish my reading in Dublin last summer. And a woman rushed up to me and she said, Oh, Tess, that isn't just a poem, that's an anthem. So I decided, what shall I read? Oh, I'll read an anthem. And the poem was written about the time we were celebrating the first man to walk on the moon. The poets decide to keep the moon. Although the general imaginative capacity might seem to have been plundered by a man having set foot on the moon, poets decided without deciding to just keep dropping it into their poems as if nothing much had happened. They let it shine down on lovers as an ancient power and in the bedtime stories of children, you still had to say good night to it. My part Cherokee mother was alive at the time this man step took place I remember her black hair falling to her waist like a horsehair shawl when she took it in. So a man walked on the moon, she said. Ah, they have been walking on women for years and haven't discovered them. I think the moon is safe. She could be severe like someone who would leave you to die on the mountain when your time came. The moon carried your great-grandmother out of a river once when it flooded her bed in the night, she said. She climbed on its back and it floated her to shore. Then my mother went back to her astonishment that while men could walk on the moon, they continued to walk on women years into years, moons into moons, without realizing step into step they were on sacred soil, the far-off flesh of their birth into death into birth mothers. We sat silent together, trying to take in such ignorance and starfall. Soon it was time for breakfast. The moon had forgotten us altogether. I shook out some Cheerios into our bowls, those dependable moons with holes in the middle that miraculously float in milk. We took up our spoons like two planetary insurgents, women brave enough every day for the journey. Thank you for hearing my poem.